Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Up to the Real. I am Julian, as always. And it's your boy James. So today we're just going to talk about a few things. Um, again, it's not really that much news coming out towards the end of the year, but nonetheless, there's still movie news to talk about, so we'll get there. Of course, we're going to talk about the box office. This week, to no surprise, um, Ralph Breaks the Internet is dominating the box office, or as you said last week, Ralph Breaks the Internet breaks the box office. Yeah. Again, for number one, second week in a row. Second is actually The Grinch. Beats okay. out Creed for number three. And Crimes of Grindelwald, which is the most interesting one, goes from $29 million from last weekend to 11 this past weekend. Ouch. Kind of says a lot about Crimes of Grindelwald. Yeah, it says that there's not a lot to say about it, apparently. <laughs> um, I, I told you, I was disappointed with it. Yeah. Really and uh, it's funny, it's one of the things like, I'm I'm surprised that uh, Grinch is so high up there. I mean, it's probably because it's a kid fam family friendly movie, um, and I figure that people are like oh we can go see R Ralph's Breaks Internet and they're like oh we already saw that now let's go watch Grinch, because um, I know a lot of people are kind of cold on this Grinch because they were like oh I like the Jim Carrey Grinch blah 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 blah. I still do. I mean I, I'm I am a Grinch so it's like I, I'm watching my <laughs> real life so yourself. it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> get to me. Um, Good to see Creed still on top three. That's always good. That's good. That said, it's it's crazy because outside of those four movies, I can't think of anything else out. So I feel like Crimes of Grindelwald is like number four by default almost. It is by default, but as not this week, but next week happens, I see it dropping out of the top five. Oh, yeah, definitely. Which we will talk about next week. Um, yeah, let's, let's see it. Then second story yeah so the big thing that really happened this week probably the major news story is that we got the big long trailer for uh captain, captain marvel. marvel um we see her kind of beating up some scroll we see how she kind of became a kree and why she's like going to be so young still even in the future and it's uh it's i so i i don't think the trailers have looked great so far i don't think they look i bad. wholeheartedly agree but i'm still gonna see it i love brie larson I, I Captain Marvel's cool character. The effects look cool and everything, and it's it's a Marvel origin story. I don't ever expect much from the first movies, um, so I'm excited for it. Just so I can see where this is gonna go. I agree. Um, the thing is, is like I like you said, this one didn't blow me away like Wonder Woman's trailer did. Oh, no, yeah. It's it's just like oh okay, it's another it's another origin story. Okay. And the parallels to the Green Lantern franchise, like, cr crash, instead of an alien crashing on Earth, she crash lands there. It's like, you get superpowers, and, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it'll be interesting to see the special effects. It'll that's be the main interesting thing. to see how she becomes the actual Captain Marvel that we know in the comics. Um, we get the cool mohawk outfit. I like that with the, yeah. We get more, the, the coolest thing about the trailer is that we get more pictures, pictures of, like, of the, her. The, the her in the costume. Yeah. yeah. And then, I don't, I don't know how I feel about Sam Jackson being so touchy feely with a cat. I think that cat's gonna take his eye. You think so? That's where I think it's going. This is the first movie we've seen Nick Fury with an eye, with both, both eyes, his eyes, and you see him playing with a cat. That cat's taking his eye. I'm calling it. I'm shooting my shot. I don't think it's gonna be that crazy. But nah, the cat's a Cree. You think so? Yeah, that's something I just made up on the spot. <laughs> it's taking his eye. If he spoils it. <laughs> I'm writing for Marvel. Shh, don't tell nobody. <laughs> So on that note, we're going to go from book to end news to, I think, even worse news. So, the Oscars have finally finalized who they're con and confirmed who their host will be. It's none other than Kevin Hart. Yeah. I don't I don't know how I feel about that. So the funniest thing, it was I, the, I was on Twitter all day kind of looking at, like, everyone's like, they still don't have a host. No one wants to host the Oscars. And then it falls on Kevin Hart's lap. I'm like, yeah, that sounds about right. But... I mean, here's the thing. There hasn't been any, like, spectacular hosts in the Oscars for Who years. Was last year? It was Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. It was I... Jimmy Kimmel last year. year before that was Jimmy Kimmel again. Two years before that was... Ellen, maybe? Uh, NPH. Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Chris Rock was okay one. But even still, it's like, Chris Rock on the Oscars isn't full Chris Rock. So it's like, you're funny, but, like, we know how you're supposed to be funny. Right. Supposed to be raunchy. This is, like... The last ones I can really remember, I remember Ellen because there's that famous picture that they took, the selfie. And yeah, then there was, that broke the internet. And then I remember uh, it was like James Franco and Anne Hathaway co-hosting a couple years back or something like that. Mm -hmm. Those are probably the last ones I can really remember, really. The thing is, I don't think Kevin Hart's going to bring anything special to the table 
no offense to you, Kevin Hart. I am a fan of yours, but it's just, I don't know. This is a different crowd, I would say. Yeah, oh, definitely. The thing is, I would say if they would have made like Trevor, if they would have had Trevor Noah do it, I think it would have been a little bit more yeah. right on the nose. And watching like the v- video game awards, which are coming up, thinking more about that. I think the Oscars would have a lot to take from that, where it's like, yeah, we're giving away awards, but we're also showing off new things. Because the Oscars, in all honesty, is kind of boring. It is. It's like, I'd, I'd, just, I'd rather just sit there and just watch the awards. You're like, I don't need all the extra shtick and everything. Like, Just I just tell me who you, who won the awards. That's really what I'm at at this point. Well, see, and the thing is, I'm a huge, like I said, I'm a huge film guy. I'm a film buff. Um, I love watching the Oscars. Every year, this is like my quote-unquote yeah. Super Bowl, you know? And so I love watching and seeing who wins the awards and things like that. But I will say that the pacing of the show did get out of hand. It's and terrible. this last one, and this last one, like, to be honest, the only two films that I really, well, three, that I really cared for was Get Out, Dunkirk, and Three Billboards. And we don't even have an Oscar nomination list. We won't get that until about two or three more weeks. Golden Globes is going to be dropping when this video drops on Thursday. So, I mean... Yeah, I don't know. I feel like they could either speed it up or they could add more things that actually make me want to watch. And see, that's what they're trying to do for popular category, and that's why they're getting Kevin Hart to be the host this year, so they can get more appeal for it. Hello, fellow kids. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's dumb. They, they seem like they're just old and out of touch at this point, so. I agree, and that's why I'm like, we gotta do a revamp. Uh, speaking of re- revamps, that's a nice segue right there. Um, the Mary Poppins uh, new reboot, um, they had their early kind of like screenings for it, and the reviews are looking really freaking good for that movie. Yeah, like for Mary Poppins Returns, which is a sequel, not a reboot. I oh, wish whatever. it was. How is it a sequel? Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> so it, it takes place, I think, 20 or 30 years after the original events of Mary Poppins. How old is Mary so, Poppins? Do I not know? Enough? I don't know enough about Mary Poppins. She is, a, is she an immortal seen, alien? You haven't seen. Is she immortal? Mary, no, she's she's a nanny. She's a magical nanny. I, that's magic the best people. way. That's the best way to put it. That's yeah, the magic best. People get old. Wizards are old. Just just let it be, okay? Let it be. It should be a prequel. But it's it takes place twenty years after the kids from the original ones grew up. Okay. And it's their kids, and they're basically going through troubles after the war of the Second World War, and how basically it's just not the same. And Mary Poppins comes back to help their family all over again. And I've heard from USA Today, from a lot of reviewers who USA Today interviewed, that it's just as great of a classic as Mary Poppins. Yes, that classic that I remember clearly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously. So, I mean, they said that Emily Blunt is almost like... Well, she's fantastic. So that's... Yeah. But... She's a fantastic actress. She is a fantastic actress, but to pop off, pop off Mary Poppins. <laughs> I was about to do it. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> Not even mean to do that, but it has to. To, to take the role of Mary Poppins. Yeah, to take yeah. the role of Mary Poppins and how she took it as her own. I haven't even watched it yet. I'm probably going to watch it like the week it comes out. That with Bumblebee and. Oh, sure that comes yeah, out. that Mary Poppins, Bumblebee. Bumblebee starring John Cena. Don't forget. <laughs> And uh, what's the third film that comes out? Aquaman. How did I forget Aquaman? Oh yeah, but which I've been hearing kind of mixed to okay things about. So so I was just about to say speaking, speaking of, of that, yeah. Speaking of those, so the three films that comes out, the three films that comes out that weekend: Mary Poppins, Instant Classic, Bumblebee, and I called it. They said this is the best Transformers movie. Today. Again, that you could be the shiniest turd. I mean, <laughs> and I still think this movie looks good, but that's saying literally nothing at this point. <laughs> Alright. They could have had a blank screen. People were like, Yeah, okay. Sure. <laughs> sure. I'll take it. That was better than I'll take the other it. one. And then Aquaman, a lot of people are praising the special effects. But the pacing is all over the place I've heard. Uh, I hear it's not trying to just be like straight up superhero movie though. Right. I heard I heard a lot of people are like the pacing was all over the place that it's not really a superhero movie that everybody thought it would be. It's more of a coming of age story, and a lot of people didn't like that. They thought they would just get a a dumb action movie, superheroes, yeah. yeah. And so, early review, early people reviews are saying that it's like audiences are mixed. Comic book fans somewhat okay with it. Critics are like, yeah, it's not 
Batman versus Superman, but it's not Wonder yeah. Woman. So I don't know. Like that's kind of throws it off. I wonder if it because Jason Momoa just has like pure charisma. Yeah. I'm wondering if that's just like powering through the movie to the point where it's like, hey, this movie would be bad probably without him, but he's just a likable dude. So it's like, it's like, okay, sure. But, but see, the thing is, it's like the director too. Like James Wan, in my opinion, hasn't really made a bad movie. He made the two Conjuring films, Saw, Dead Silence. I'm missing a movie. Probably. <laughs> oh. Uh, what's the one where uh, Paul Walker died? Fast and Furious Seven. He made Furious Seven, and there's another film. I'm sorry, James Wan. I don't know your filmography like that. I just like in my head, I was like, he died in the movie, and they're like, I was like, no, he died. And I was like, oh no, that was oh god, yeah. And he made that one, and all of those were I thought were really good. And then this might be his first dud. Maybe it's the curse of Paul Walker. He killed him. That's what you just apparently told me on this, this live. You heard first he during the di- movie. He, he killed. Di- oh, he killed Paul Walker. Um, so what other news <laughs> we got? Anything left? Because I can't remember oh, anything left. God. Oh, um, the 25th anniversary of Schindler's List. Yes, yeah, Schindler's List. Another. See, here's the thing. Earlier when you were talking about Mary Poppins, I often get Mary Poppins confused with the sound of music, and the sound of music I often often get kind of confused with Schindler's List in a way. They're all about World, World War Two. So, I need. Yeah. Uh, I'm just. I just want to see Liam Neeson like. The hills are alive. <laughs> the sound of music. Oh, and that. just like punchy people <laughs> snapping necks. That'd be, that'd be sick. I'm just saying. Oh, and that. No, we're gonna close this episode out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> Hit the little bell below to make sure you get notifications. Leave some comments. <laughs> tell your friends. See, uh, okay. tell us what movies you want to be nominated and win at the Oscars and everything like that. So, God, there's not. A, well, I haven't seen a lot of movies this year. Hopefully, there'll be some good ones. We'll talk about that. Black Panther's supposed to be getting almost ten nominations. That's, that's supposedly. Dope. Well, um, we'll see. Also, probably within the next couple weeks, we'll probably have our movies and games list for the year so yes so stay tuned in for that we're both going to put our top five for games top five for movies and we're going to go from which there. is good because i've probably seen like five movies this year so <laughs> and his top five that's my really list <laughs> it's going to be schindler's list sound of music mary poppins i just saw him for the first time all right see you guys next time see you guys <laughs>